right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hopefully my mic's on. If not, I'll try to talk a little loud so everybody can hear me. So as we were, we heard earlier, we're continuing our sermon series, Eyes on Jesus, this morning. Looking at who Jesus is and what Jesus came to earth to accomplish for us. Well, last week, Pastor Deborah talked about how Jesus is a living water and how we can open ourselves up to be filled by him. Today, I'm going to talk about Jesus as our deliverer. Now, when you think of the word deliverer, you probably think about the guy in the brown suit driving the big brown truck around town. <laughs> but it's not the kind of deliverer we're talking about. The word deliverer we're talking about actually means to rescue. So what does Jesus deliver or rescue us from? Well, Jesus rescues us from sin, from death, and from the wrath of God the Father. So Jesus delivers us from sin and death. Now when I think of sin, I think of, and death, a lot like a black hole in space. Now black holes have such a huge gravitational pull that nothing, not even light, which is pure energy, can escape from them. They trap everything in their gravitational pull and pull it toward their center in complete destruction. Sin is much the same. It has such a powerful pull on us that it's nearly impossible to escape pulling us further and further toward it, and at the center of it is certain death. We're trapped in the swirling black hole of sin, and there's nothing we can do to get out of it. The closer to the center you are, the more sin has a hold of you and your actions. Now, some people go with the flow and willingly allow sin to take control of their lives and move toward death with little fear or regard of the consequences. Others may try to fight it for a bit of a time, but eventually they get overwhelmed by it and succumb to it. And still others fight the pull of sin and try to get out. Now we can try to get out on our own, and we may be able to get right to the edge, but we can never fully overcome the pull of sin by ourselves. We need help. We need a rescuer. And we find out who that rescuer is in Scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10 says, And wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 15 say this, Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook, partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all of their lives. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, which we just heard about from Pastor Daniel in our children's moment, says this, For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. And 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18 says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. As the scriptures I've just read all say, Jesus came to rescue us. He has his hand stretched out, ready to pull us out. We have only to reach out and grasp it. Doesn't matter how far we're pulled into sin either. Jesus can reach you wherever you are in the black hole of sin. Jesus can reach all the way to the center and pull us back out if we would only ask for and accept his help. This is the gift of salvation that is freely offered to all of us. We're saved from sin by Jesus and his death on the cross. Jesus died on the cross and went to the center of the black hole. He came back out. And we can reach out and take his hand and follow him as he helps us get all the way out as well. Now we must be willing to follow him though. We must be willing to allow him to pull us toward God and away from sin. If we choose to let go of Jesus, we can, we can and will be pulled back toward sin and toward death. By choosing to allow Jesus to guide us out of sin, we're allowing Jesus to gain our firmer grasp on us as well. The more tightly we hold on to him and allow him to help us and guide us, the less pull sin will have on us. And we see evidence of this choice in our lives as well. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23 say, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. This is the word of the Lord. If we are really sold out followers of Jesus Christ, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. If we're filled with the Holy Spirit and are growing into mature Christians, we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, and self-control. We have the Lord, the Holy Spirit, leading us in the path of righteousness. Our lives now revolve around God, the Creator, and all that exists. But what if we are not devoted followers of Jesus and are still living ungodly, sinful lives by allowing sin to continue to maintain its pull on us? Instead of love, we'll have hate. Instead of joy, we'll have sorrow. Instead of peace, we'll have strife. Instead of patience, we'll be short-tempered. Instead of kindness, we'll receive cruelty. Instead of goodness, we have wickedness. Instead of faithfulness, we're met with disloyalty. Instead of gentleness, we're met with harshness. Instead of having self-control, we'll be completely out of control. By allowing sin to maintain its pull on us, we will ultimately be pulled to our death. And I don't mean our physical death. Everybody dies physically. No, I'm talking about spiritual death. When we allow sin to take us completely, we allow it to pull us completely away from God and life in his coming kingdom. This is a death that Jesus rescues us from. God is bringing about a new heaven and a new earth. And Jesus is the only way to gain access to it. Just like we cannot escape sin on our own, we cannot get into the new kingdom on our own either. Jesus is the only way to gain entry. We must follow Jesus and become like Jesus if we want to be part of the new creation. Those that are not part of the new creation are left forever separated from God the Father and all that is good and pure in the world. They're doomed to spend the rest of eternity in a world without God, a world with nothing good, nothing pure, a world void of all the fruits of the Spirit. I don't know about you, but that's not really a world I want to live in. I can't even imagine living in a world, let alone spending an eternity, in a world where there's no love, where there's no kindness, where there's no patience. Goodness, peace, joy, gentleness, or self-control. That's a world full of horrors and pain and suffering. It's literally what hell is. And that's what Jesus rescues us from. If we're willing to follow him and ask him into our lives and allow him to save us from ourselves and our sinful desires. Jesus is our deliverer. He is our Lord and Savior. He rescues us not because we deserve to be rescued, but because God, because God loves us so much that he sends him to rescue us anyway. Amen. God sent Jesus to rescue us from the pull of sin and death. We need only to reach out and take his hand and allow Jesus to guide our minds and our hearts away from sin and into everlasting life full of love with God. This is the message of the gospel that we're called to proclaim to the world. And I hope that as we leave this place today, that you'll be compelled to proclaim that message to the world. I know that as I studied for this sermon, I felt compelled to share that message, not just here with you today, but with the rest of the world, my family and my friends and anybody that may not hear it otherwise. Because it's an important message. Father, thank you for bringing us here together this morning to hear your word. I am proud and privileged to be up here today just to give that word for you. And I hope that those who have heard it today, not just here in my presence, but online as well, feel compelled to hold that message in their hearts, to reach out and grab you and hold on to you and let go of their life of sin. And I pray that if we can be of any help to help somebody want to reach out and grab you or help somebody to reach out and grab you that we can be that that person for you. I pray that we always remember to hold on to you and never 
Never think about letting go. And I pray that we all come to your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You all have discussion questions at your table. So feel free to discuss those now. And once you are done discussing those, feel free to have some refreshments. Hang out, have some fellowship, have some fun, or you're free to leave at that point if you'd like to.